Hello, students. Welcome to today's lesson on the next element of art, texture. Let's begin. Texture is a visual way to describe how an object feels when it is held or touched. Let me show you some examples of actual texture you can feel with your hands. Here I have a glass candle votive. Its texture is smooth to the touch, with no rough or sharp bumps. Whereas this pot of cacti has a rough texture of dirt inside, and each cactus has sharp and spiky needles. Here I have a bowl of crayons that has smooth and bumpy border around it. Here is a paintbrush with a smooth handle and soft, feathery bristles. And here is a work rug you may recognize in our past art videos. This work rug has multiple textures in its weave and at the fringe. The rug itself is very soft, but you can feel the different textures in the pattern of its weave. All of these are examples of actual texture because I can hold them in my hands and feel them. But if we were to draw these descriptions, it would be called implied texture because it reminds us of how things feel to the touch, but we can't actually touch them. Let's draw together some implied textures. For today's lesson on texture, you'll need a piece of paper and pencil. You might want some coloring utensils as well, but you don't have to. Feel free to pause at each category if you need time to draw each section. Let's begin with smooth. How can we draw smooth? Well, here I have this circle with no bumps or edges, but to make it smoother, let's have it resemble light reflecting off of it. To do this, if you look at this candle votive, you can see light shining on the side. But if we were to draw a little circle or teardrop shape near the edge of the bubble, it gives it this illusion that it's smoother. Do you see? Now let's draw the votive. Here I have the circular top, curved sides. I'll give it some form with a dashed oval at the bottom, and I'm going to draw a thin teardrop shape and circle on the sides to give it a smoother texture. Now we can make it more realistic by adding some shading at the bottom to make it look like it's sitting on a surface. Let me show you how I draw sharp and jagged texture. I show sharp texture by drawing really pointy zigzag lines or straight lines in different directions really close together. Let's try to draw a cactus in a pot like this one here. First, I am going to draw the pot with a circle on top. Right now, just as is, everything looks very smooth, but if we draw those sharp straight lines and zigzags all around, it gives us the image of a spiky texture on the cactus. Two main ways I like to draw soft texture is by drawing a bunch of curved lines together. Or sometimes if I want to draw something that resembles a cloud or cotton, I draw short curved lines connected together. Let's look at this brush and its soft bristles. First we draw the handle, then the metal ferrule that holds the soft bristles. And here we draw the long slightly curved lines to resemble the hairs of the brush. Speaking of hairs, I'm going to use the exact same technique to draw long hair on a person's head and a soft feather. Watch and follow along. Let's use the cloud technique to draw the head of a teddy bear. First, I like to draw the head, then the ears.
than the beaded eyes, nose, and embroidered smile. It reminds you of a soft toy animal to hold, yes? Now let's talk about how to draw rough and bumpy texture. To draw a bumpy texture, I like to do a combination of curved, wavy, and pointy lines all in a long scribble. I'm going to draw a pathway like I did in our shapes project, some wavy lines to resemble grass surrounding the pathway. And to make it look like a dirt road, I am going to draw some scribble lines along the path. Here are some small circles to resemble rocks. It looks like a bumpy road, but if we were to combine different elements of art together in our drawing, we could make the texture stand out more. I'm going to add some color by outlining my drawing with crayon and shading it in. You can really get a sense of texture on the grass and road now. But if we were to change the color of the road from brown to blue, what happens? Now instead of a bumpy rough dirt road, you have a wavy river stream. Color plays a very important role in art and can easily change your texture. We'll talk more about color in our next lesson, but for now, let's begin our art project of implied texture by using actual texture. Today, I am going to show you the art of frittage. Frittage is the art of taking an uneven surface and creating a copy of it on paper with pencil or another art utensil. Here I am going to show you two different ways to create art using the frittage technique. On the left, I created art by using natural elements from outside, like autumn leaves that have fallen from the trees. On the right, I have taken different textures from inside my home and created an abstract work of art. You can choose indoor or outdoor items for this project, but I am going to show you how I made both of these in this video. For today's artwork, you will need peeled crayons, two or more sheets of white printer paper, a sheet of construction paper, a glue stick, and a marker to sign your artwork when you are done. You will also need to decide if you are going to use natural outdoor elements for your texture or indoor items you found from your home or classroom. Here, my son and I collected different leaves from campus. We looked for leaves that were of different size, shape, and texture to make an interesting piece of art. If you want to do outdoor elements, you could use leaves, river rocks, pebbles, or twigs. For indoor items, I found a lot of fun textures near my workspace. The spiral ring of my notebook, a paper clip, the mesh metal of my pencil holder, the different weaves of a couple baskets, what different textures can you find indoors? For my colored utensils, I peeled autumn colored crayons that reminded me of fallen leaves. You could also use the flat side of colored pencils, but I find rubbing with the side of crayons gives the best effect for this technique. The first thing I am going to do for my leaf art is lay down one printer paper to place my leaves onto a surface. Then pick up one of your leaves and feel where it has the bumpiest texture. I am going to place the smooth side of my leaf face down. Then I need to decide where I want this leaf to be in my art. Place the paper you are going to color on top of the leaf. Choose the color you want to use and gently rub over the leaf and begin to see the details transfer onto your page.
To make my leaves really stand out, I am going to use two different colors for each leaf. So before I let go of where the leaf is, I am going to continue to press down, grab a different color, and rub over it again. Think of a pile of autumn leaves you often see on the ground outside. They always fall down from the tree in different directions. Take your leaves one at a time and lay them in different directions just as you would find them fallen in a pile outside. You could also try to place two or more leaves to rub all at once, but if you place too many leaves, they might move as you color over them. Be very gentle so you don't break or move the leaves underneath your paper. To me, this type of frittage art looks best when the fallen leaves look like it has taken over the entire page. Here I have a lot of white blank space on the edges of my paper. Try to fill up your entire page by placing half of your leaf on the edge like this and carefully filling up those blank spaces. It makes it look more realistic. Now that I am done with my piece, I am ready to frame it with construction paper. I want my border to be even on all sides, so I am going to trim off a little bit on one end with my ruler, pencil, and scissors. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. Now take your glue stick and place your art onto the construction paper. You created a frame for your artwork. Don't forget to sign it and date it on the back. If you do not have the opportunity to gather items outside, let me show you how I used indoor items to create another work of art with texture. For this next piece, I peeled more colored crayons and collected my indoor items of different textures. Here, I have a mesh cup pencil holder, a rubber pencil holder, the pattern on my bowl, a honeycomb filter I found in my kitchen, a paper clip, a spiral notebook, and woven baskets. Go ahead and collect different items inside you can use to create your work of art. I am going to start with this honeycomb filter. It's square, but I'm going to rub over it in a circular motion like this. I love the look of using two or more colors on the same shape. 
it makes the texture really stand out. Make sure you don't color directly onto the shape with the tip of the crayon. Rubbing on its side is best. Color along with me as I go through the other items from my work of art. This mesh cup was a bit tricky because it's not flat like the other pieces I used. If you are going to use a piece like this, you could tape your paper onto the cup so it stays in place. But for me, I just wrapped my paper around the cup where I needed it and carefully held onto both items so everything stayed in place. I filled my entire sheet of paper so there aren't any blank spaces left, but paper clips transfer so well when making frittage art, so I'm going to rub over a paper clip a few times. I ended up using these four items to make this work of art. Which items did you use? Here are a couple other examples of frittage using indoor items. I used the paper clip in a chain pattern, the basket weave texture, and these circles are from different buttons I found on my jacket. Here I used the paper clip to look like sun rays, the edge of my bowl to resemble a rainbow, and I added my other basket. Frittage is really fun. You can use an item as simple as a paper clip to make different shapes in your art like the sun. Which one did you end up creating? Outdoor or indoor frittage? Maybe both? Either way, I hope you had fun playing with different textures and adding more elements to your works of art. Until next time, take care and stay creative.